Hello folks, today we'll be looking at CXBQN, which is a BQN virtual machine written in C++. Now, although this video is sort of primarily about CXBQN, the majority of the content will be about the BQN virtual machine itself and how you might write one. So before we get started, we'll take a look at why I would write something like this. First of all, it seemed really fun and the documentation was pretty accessible. I'd also like to write a BQN virtual machine that was pretty easy to contribute to. But the biggest reason is that I couldn't find a GPU-enabled APL version out in the public, but being an array language, it seemed like a perfect candidate for an interpreted language to be GPU-enabled. Now, CXBQN is not currently GPU-enabled, but that's the hope moving forward. So let's get started looking at the bytecode format for the BQN virtual machine. So the format for the compilation unit is pretty simple. This is the compilation unit for the BQN program 2 plus 2. The bytecode here is just a string of integers, which I'll explain a little bit later. The constants array is filled with values that stay the same throughout the lifetime of the program, as you might expect. And then we have blocks, which represent a lexical scope, which might have multiple bodies, which should be ran under certain conditions. And then we have an array of various bodies with an index into the bytecode, which they represent, and the number of variables. There are also two more optional fields for the bodies, but we won't get into those now. And then there are also two more optional fields at the end of the compilation unit, which we also want to look at. Here at the top, we have a couple fields from the compilation unit that we looked at before. And then down below, we'll have the current instruction that we're executing along with the stack for the current VM invocation. The BQN VM is designed as a stack machine. So the first instruction we'll execute here for our program 2 plus 2 is 0, 1. And 0 represents the push instruction, pushing the first element of the constants array onto the stack. The next element pushes the zeroth element of the constants array onto the stack. Then we have the same instruction as the first. And then the next instruction is fn20, which, which pops three elements off of the stack and calls the second element with the other two as arguments. So in this case, we'll pop off two plus and two, which would then return four. And then the final instruction is redn, which just returns the value at the top of the stack from the current scope. So this would return four, just as we would expect from two plus two. Now that we've taken a look at the bytecode, we'll take a look at the runtime, the other major component of the BQN virtual machine. So if we return back to the compiler output, you'll notice that earlier I just replaced the constants array with plus and two to avoid getting into the runtime earlier. This runtime is an array of functions provided by the host virtual machine such that the compiler output can use them. And they have known indices, so runtime of zero is the plus operator. This is specified in the BQN specification. And if we return to the specification, it's a list of BQN operations that have to work with only a subset of the possible inputs. You can imagine writing this in Python, say the pick function, as taking the first element of the right argument, if there is no left argument, or using the left argument as an index into the right argument. And then you could probably imagine writing a few more of these functions, and then sticking them in this array that the compilation unit is then able to reference. And we'll take a look at how these systems fit together. Up at the top, we have our BQN source code, something like the string 2 plus 2 in our earlier examples. This is then fed into the BQN compiler running in a host virtual machine, which then outputs a compilation unit. This is then fed into the new virtual machine, but remember that the new virtual machine is also paired with the runtime, which feeds some values back into the compilation unit. For example, runtime of zero, the plus operator. Now, the runtime is broken into three different levels at its simplest. You have the primitive runtime, you have R0, and you have R1. Now, R0 just depends on the primitive runtime and the new virtual machine that you're writing. And then R1 depends on R0. These all extend each other a little bit like so, and at the end of the day, you have an R1 capable of supporting the full BQN compiler. Now, at this point, we have a full compiler able to compile BQN source code, and that's pretty much all you need for a virtual machine. But keep in mind that at this point, all we've really written is a new virtual machine and a primitive runtime and R0 and R1 have hidden quite a bit of complexity from us. So now let's take a look at CXBQN. So here I've already cloned the repository. I'll just clean out a previous build, make sure everything is configured how I want it, and then I'll compile again. I'm speeding this up here in post so that you don't have to sit there and watch my code compile. And now I'll print out the version and help information. And then here I'll start up the REPL. I'll paste in an example from a previous problem that I've made a video on from the Try APL problem set. And then I'll print out a slightly bigger version of the same problem. 
And you can see it's quite a bit slower than uh, CBQN, which is the most performant BQN virtual machine at the moment. I realized in post that I never showed off the read line capabilities of CXBQN. So you can see here, I'll create some variable named foo, and then I'll create another variable, foo bar baz. And then you can see that if I hit tab, it'll complete to foo. And then if, it, if I hit tab a couple more times, it'll show all the possible names that I have available in the scope. Okay, in conclusion, uh, BQN is an awesome language and I had a ton of fun writing a virtual machine for it. I have high hopes for a GPU enabled APL derivative and I would absolutely love contributions if any of you are willing. And I would highly encourage all of you to try out writing a BQN virtual machine for yourself. The JavaScript virtual machine that runs the Try BQN page is written in about 500 lines or so of JavaScript. So the barrier to entry to writing a BQN virtual machine is not quite as high as you might think. Alright, thanks everybody and I'll see you next time.